Hello everybody and welcome back to LS1's LEGO Garage and in today's video I am going to go over how to build one of these one cylinder LEGO vacuum engines. So before we get into the video, I would like to do just a brief walk around of this small, like I said, one cylinder engine. As you can see, obviously one cylinder, one valve, very simple. You have these cross braces on top, which help keep the whole engine from coming apart as like that. As you can see, it just comes apart like that. So these keep it as one piece and keep it from coming apart. As you can see, if anything, it would just come off the stand. But um, yeah. It's got a small sliding throttle, very, very efficient, very easy to tune, very easy to build, very few amount of parts, but revs up insanely fast. But uh, let, me, let me just show you how fast it revs. So let's get right into that. Apologies ahead of time for the very, very loud vacuum noise. I, this is my first time testing the vacuum in this different position, so it might be a lot louder, so I do apologize for that. But uh, yeah, let's try to run this thing and see how fast it goes. I got a tachometer right here. So let's see how fast she, rev she revs too. As you can hear, it revs extremely high. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go above about 3,500 RPMs, but I can assure you that this engine has reached above that before. It's just really, really hard to tune it properly and also hold this, hold the vacuum here and have the tachometer. So it has reached almost 4,000 before. It was at, I think, 4,800, which is pretty, pretty fast for a small plastic Lego engine. But um, anyways, I think we should get right into the tutorial. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. brick by brick build. This will be more of a section by section or chunk by chunk. So let me uh, line up all the parts for you so that way you'll have a proper parts list or pretty close to it. So uh, yeah, let's do that.
right now here is a general list of all of the parts you will need feel free to pause the video at any time so that way you can get a proper view of the parts this will only cover the piston cylinder and block of the engine this will not include the throttle body that'll be a second section of the video but um, as you can see you'll need quite a few parts but uh, should be manageable for most longtime builders or collectors this is the piston this is glued so I cannot take it apart but you should be able to generally see the parts used here As you see, my parts are very worn. You can also substitute this part for a just regular three long. It does not have to be a T styled part. Then you will need the parts on this cylinder head. Just take a second to pause the video right here so you can get a good view of all of the parts. All right, so at this point in the video, it would probably be a good time to get your stand, whatever you're going to put your engine on. If it's just a regular base plate or something like this, it'd be a good time to get that prepared. And um, also, if you'd like to do it brick by brick and you don't have an idea of what you're doing already, I would go ahead and slow down the video a little bit because I'm going to time lapse the build because I do not want a super long video. So um, go feel free to adjust your settings and everything, and uh, let's get right into the build. Alright, so at this point in the build, you are starting to get into the piston and the cylinder. That is the next thing that we are adding to this block, to the main portion that we've already built. So what we want to go ahead and do first is set our timing, because this is what will make the engine run. This is incredibly crucial. If you do not do timing correctly, if you do not time the engine correctly, it will not run, and it will create a, not a bunch of issues, but it just will not run, and it will create a lot of frustration and you'll not know why it's not running so to save you the hassle of making sure your timing is correct put your piston at the very very bottom Oops, you can't even see put your piston at the very very bottom of the cylinder so it is like this so this main crankshaft right here is at the very very bottom or it can be at the very very top but i find the very very bottom is a lot easier and a lot less confusing now go ahead and take your valve crankshaft this yellow one right here and put it somewhere to the left or to the right. So if it's at the bottom like this, if the main crankshaft is at the bottom like this, put yours left or right. So it can go right there or right there. It cannot go up and it cannot go down. If these two right here, if these two are in sync like this, it will not run. If they are 180 degrees offset like this, it will not run. If they are on the exact same plane like this, it will not run. So make sure your timing is like this. If you want to run clockwise in a clockwise direction, so like this, then do your timing exactly as I have it in this picture right here, or in this video. Just take a second to pause the video if you have to, but make sure you get your timing right. That is absolutely crucial, as well as your valve timing. You have to make sure that your valve is almost identical to this one right here. If you do not do that, the odds are it will not run. You have to make sure your airflow is timed properly or else it will create a lot of issues down the road. So to save a lot of time, go ahead and make your valve as close to this as possible and make your crankshaft as close to this as possible.
So this is everything except for the throttle body done. All we have left to do now is make the throttle body and then we'll, we, we'll basically be done. It'll be time to run your first engine. And I do wish you luck, hopefully it does run. But um, yeah, if you do not have something like this so far, I would recommend going back and double checking what you're doing and make sure that uh, you get everything correct. For example, this little piece right here on top needs to be in that exact position right there. If it's the other way around, flat part facing the cylinder, it will not run. It, well, it might. There's a chance it will run, but it will run very poorly if it does run. But make sure it's very, very smooth. And also, I forgot to mention earlier in the parts list, you're going to need a flywheel. So something about like this, put it on, should carry out the rotation of the engine. Something about like this size, it can be a little bit smaller, but I would recommend something as close to this size as possible. Something like this would work, or even something like this. Doesn't have to be too cool, too crazy, or anything like that. But uh, let's put this engine to the side and go ahead and I'll show you how to build the throttle body. So here are all the necessary parts you'll need to build the top portion of the throttle body. We're going to do this in two separate stages. So we're going to do the top and the sliding portion. And then we will do the bottom portion, which is right here. These are parts that you can use, but are unnecessary. These are not necessary parts. Most of these are decorative. But if you would like to add these and make it look closer to mine, then you can feel free to add these. But um, let's get right into building the top portion and the sliding part of the throttle body. Let's get it. This is the top portion of the throttle body done. Should have something that looks similar to this. Same concept, same principle. Pretty easy, pretty small amount of parts needed. Now we'll go ahead and build the lower portion of the throttle body. So let's get to it. So here's all the parts for the top portion of the throttle body. All of these are necessary. But I'll uh, just give you a second to gather up all of your parts. Like I said, feel free to pause this. But uh, let's get right into the uh, building process. Now we got the throttle body, the lower half of the throttle body done. Now let's install it onto our engine. So let me adjust you all's view. Just raise it up a hair. Now we'll go ahead and take our supports from the sides off. Go ahead and pop the cylinder up a little bit. Then you're gonna go ahead and without breaking any parts off it. Take the throttle body and set it right like that. All right, so you can see how it's supported. Now you're gonna take the cylinder, push it back down, make sure that that is connected right there. Make sure your uh, engine ha free, has free flowing air, or really good airflow, I should say. Now, 
Let's go ahead, put our throttle plate in place. So there you go. And now we will take our final piece and you are done with your engine. We will go ahead and put our supports, click those back in place and might as well add our flywheel right now. There you go. Your Lego vacuum engine is complete. This is my performance one cylinder. Like I said, rev really high, but um, yeah. Hope this tutorial was easy enough to follow. Hope you really enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider subscribing. I am hoping to reach 500 subscribers pretty soon. But um, yeah, that's, that's going to be a huge milestone for me, so please help me reach it. Also, please check out the Discord linked in the description down below, as well as timestamps for different portions of the video. But uh, yeah, I would recommend gluing your piston and gluing your valve. Also, I would recommend lubricating your engine, or and that is a pretty straightforward process. I will go ahead and show you. Let's just pop off our cylinder head without losing too many parts. Put that right back on. And let's try to pop off our cylinder head, like just like that. Now take your desired type of lubrication or oil. Do not use regular WD-40. Notice how this is specialist and silicone brand, sil silicone kind or whatever, silicone based, I should say. I will show you right on the back of the can if I can find it for myself. See, it is ideal for, or no, my bad, not ideal. Of course, I gotta say like vacuum engines on here, but it is safe to use on all metal and non-metal Notice non-metal surfaces, including rubber, similar to plastic, and plastic. So it is good for all types of plastic. This is specialist silicone. You can get it at any hardware store that I know of, or even order it on Amazon, I believe. You can use multiple different kinds as long as it is silicone based. The most common lubricant is olive oil. It is really good. I have nothing against it. It's just a little bit messy for me right now. This works a little bit better since it's quick drying. But uh, when it, by quick drying, you just have to keep it lubricated a little bit better. Just more often, pretty much. But olive oil works just as well. That's what people like KF Plus LEGO Mastery and multiple other YouTube channels use to lubricate their engines. I will say, this, or disclose, this is not 100% my design. A small portion of it is KF Plus LEGO Mastery's design. But the throttle portion and multiple other portions of this are my own design. But uh, like I said, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, I think I'll catch you in the next one. Stay stay tuned for a troubleshooting video on this engine. Should be released within this, the next couple days. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that video. And I'll catch you in the next one. LS out.